Bye. There are so many options for young people. Deciding what you want to do. Rock set. Rock set. Hold on tight. You know she's a little bit dangerous. Good evening, Australia. I'm Kevin Hillier, and welcome to Deet Rock Set. Tonight, via the magic of satellites, we're bringing you uh, probably one of the hottest bands in the world at the moment. We've actually been trying to track them down since they uh, hit the top of the charts this time last year with their first single, The Look. Since then, there's been five top ten hits, including another number one. Of course, talking about Rock Set, and uh, Pear and Marie are in the uh, studios of Studio 33 at Broadcasting House Swedish National Radio in Stockholm. Hi, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, you must be really depressed at the moment, you two. Yeah, it's terrible, <laughs> isn't it? it? It must be awful. You've got the number one single in the country. You got, it's off the number one album in the country. It's the number one film in the country. Oh, I mean, it must just be awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's sensational. It's really fantastic. Hey, have it's, you... Uh, I just gonna, this, it must have been Love was recorded in 1987, you know. It's an old song for us and it's happening everywhere, all, all over the world. So it's really fantastic. How did it uh, come to be on the soundtrack of uh, Pretty Woman? Were you asked about that? Yeah, actually, we got a request from, from the Disney people who made the film if they wanted, us, they wanted us to write a song for the soundtrack. And uh, at the time, we didn't have any time to do it. So we, we said we got this lovely ballad, which we really liked, and uh, asked if they could use that one. And they did. And uh, we sort of rechanged the lyrics so it should fit the film a little bit better. And, uh, well, here we are. Yeah, yeah, hit the, with the number one film and the number one song in the country and uh, the chance to uh, talk to Pere and Marie tonight. It's simple, you just pick up your phone, it's free right around the country, 008 033 300. Let's have a listen to that song we've been talking about. Here is Roxette on Roxette. <laughs> Here's tonight, we've got Samantha listening to 2DU and Dubbo with a question. Go ahead, Samantha. Call your album, look sharp. <laughs> <laughs> that's mainly because we are, we are in dress for success. That's a sort of a, a lyric which says, look sharp, you know, in the middle. So we thought, we thought it was a good title for the album. Okay. And also we got this song called The Look, so we, it made sense. Don't you like it? Yes, I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for your call, Samantha. We've got Daniel now listening to uh, Triple M in Sydney. Which question, Daniel? Um, Marie, what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in your career? <laughs> Uh, well, I think it was when I started to sing when I was six years old, and I, it was the most embarrassing really? thing what? in my whole life. You turned all red, or what? Yes, I turned all red. <laughs> in, in front of whom, Marie? It was in front of um, old, very old ladies who uh, was having a, you know, kind of a meeting, and uh, well, all the neighbors in the little village where, where I come from, and my mother, she was one of them, and she had said to them, oh, well, I have a daughter, she can sing very well, so, <laughs> you, so it was very embarrassing for me, but it was the first time in my life when I was singing in front of an audience. Do you get, do you get embarrassed now, uh, you know, uh, when you get on stage? No. <laughs> Nervous? I'd love to be on stage. She gets well, embarrassed when I start to sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, of course, it's very nervous. But uh, I love my job, and I, I think it's the best moment in my, in my life when I can be on stage. Daniel, thanks for your call. Yes. Yeah. Now we've got uh, Thank Al you. Alison now listening to K-Rock in Geelong. Alison? Um, who, is your, who are your favourite artists and why? Oh, uh so many good artists around. I think the biggest influence is in, in my life is the Beatles. I mean, without the Beatles, I don't think I would have started writing songs from the start. So, so if I should pick just one artist, I pick the Beatles. Yep. Marie? I think uh, Joni Mitchell is my, my favorite. And uh, I have her, all her albums. And uh, I don't know if you know her, but she is a very, very good Canadian singer. And uh, she's done a lot of albums and a very, very special lyric writer. Yeah, oh, she's had some, uh, some big hit records and big albums here in Australia. Yeah. Alison, thank you for your call. Okay, thanks. And uh, like all thank our callers you. tonight, Alison will get a copy of uh, Look Sharp and let's take another track for it on uh, Roxette. This is Sleeping Single. <laughs> Okay. 
this is Marie. And this is Per. And, and we, we are Rock Set. Set. And you just heard Sleeping Single. And you can phone in and talk to us on 0080333000. And we'll be back after this break. Rock Set. Oh, yeah. Date. Roxette, uh, right across Australia, and tonight uh, we're taking you to Stockholm, where Pierre Marie from Roxette are uh, in the studios there and ready to talk to you on 008 033 300. Uh, Robin has dialed that number. Robin, uh, here's your link to Roxette. Hi, what is your reaction to being called the ABBA of the 90s? <laughs> well, uh, ABBA was a very, very good band, and uh, they have done a lot of very good, good songs. And, uh, and, well, of course, we're very proud of them. Uh, but I don't think that we have so much in common. Um, I think our music is more rock and roll. It's, re it's, it's quite hard to live up to. I mean, ABBA was one of the greatest bands in the world in history, so it's, it's, uh, we don't really think about that too much. I don't, do, in a way. <laughs> do you think the fact that you both came from Sweden is, is the reason why people just keep kind of yeah, pushing definitely. you and ABBA together? Yes. yes. Robin, thanks I, for your call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got uh, Mark now listening to 3TR in sale. Mark, what's your question? Uh, what got you both interested in music? Uh, I got interested through my, my older brother. He, he was like a big Beatles fan, so, so he sort of played all these records for me when I was a kid, when I was like six, seven years old. So it was through, through, my, through my, my brother. And uh, actually, I didn't, I didn't want to play, play any instrument myself. I just wanted to, to write, write lyrics when I started when I was 12 or 13 years old. So it was a bit later when I started playing guitar. It was, I think it was 16 or 17 years old. Having, yeah, having no, introduced no. you to music, uh, Pierre, is your brother in music himself? No, 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 he's a lawyer. Oh, <laughs> right. How about you, Marie? <laughs> well, I started very early. I come from a very musical family, and um, I started to play piano when I was a little girl, and um, i always been loving to listen to all kind of music, jazz music, classical music, and... Um, so, but when I was, I think it was 16, 17 years old, I started a music school and uh, I wanted to be a voice teacher, but I think it was too boring. I wanted to be a <laughs> performer myself. So, um, uh, and I was, I started to listen to a lot of rock and roll music, the Beatles, the Stones, and you know, the old guys. And, uh, and here I am. Talking to us tonight. And uh, talking to Mark yes. there. Thanks, Mark. OK, thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got uh, Melinda now listening to New FM in Newcastle. Melinda? Marie, how did you both meet? How, how we met each other? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's a long time ago. We met in a very small town on the west coast in Sweden called Halmstad, which is Paris' hometown. And uh, I lived there for 10 years. And... Uh, that kind of a small town, all the musicians know each other very well and um, we shared rehearsal studio, studio and uh, became very, very good friends and in 85 we started to think about the idea to start a group called Roxette and uh, start to write in English and, and sing in English. So uh, the first album we were doing was in 86, was called Pearls of Passion but it was not released in Australia or in the rest of the world. It was only in Scandinavia. So, um, well, yes, I think it's, yeah, it's a long time ago now. So there was actually a, each other. There was actually a five-year gap between when you met and, uh, and when you actually got to work together. Did you know when you met that you would probably finish up working together? No, not at all. We were in different bands at the time, and, and both Marie and myself, we had big, successful careers in Sweden. We were doing... Swedish records in the Swedish language. So the first thing we done in English was the first Roxette album. All and right. the main reason for uh, the main reason for starting Roxette was that we wanted to try to get abroad, trying to maybe have a top 20 hit in Germany or something like that, you know, try to get into Europe. And uh, we thought we might as well do do it together since we both have this ambition. Well, now that so, you've done uh, it, obviously you'll be retiring, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, can't say blame you. Melinda, thanks a lot for your call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as we bring you uh, Rock Set on Rock Set tonight, let's have a listen to Cry. Deed Rock Set. <laughs> D 
indeed Roxet live via satellite across Australia and we promised you the big stars and uh, none bigger at the moment than Roxette who uh, joined us tonight from uh, Studio 33 in the Swedish National Broadcasting uh, Unit at uh, Stockholm and we've got Michael on the line from uh, 2WG in Wagga. Michael? Um, how long did it take you to record Look Sharp? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> I think it took like uh, four months or something, three or four months. It was, it was not too bad. We're, we're in the middle of recording a new one right now and it, it takes a little bit more time. It was quite fast and I think we recorded 13 or 14 songs and we kept all of them, so so uh, it was quite fast. I think it took a year to, I mean, from the beginning, when we start uh, writing the songs. Oh yeah, I think it that takes the most of the time goes to writing. Yes. Yeah, that's true. This, uh, this new album that you're working on at the moment, um, you started that back when, uh, earlier this year? Yeah, we started in the end, the end of January, so um, we've been busy all year long. Right, so from, uh, from the start of the album through to when we're actually going to see it will be about a year. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, right, uh, probably have a release in, in uh, February next year. All right, beauty. Michael, thanks for your call. Right, bye. And we've got uh, Melanie. Bye. Melanie is listening to Triple M in Brisbane, and Melanie has a question, don't you? Yes. Hi, Pear. Hi, Marie. Hello. Hi. Um, oh, my question is, do you think music in the 90s is bridging the generation gap? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I think that there's always going to be a music for... for for kids and teenagers, and always going to be another sort of music for for older people, you know. So I don't know. I think it's. Uh, may I think it, 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 maybe it's going to be all the music from different nations going to be put together. It's going to be more like Latin merged into rock music and, and uh, uh, yeah, European sort of music merged into American music and everything. So it's it's really a hard question to answer. All right. Melanie, thanks for your call. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. And like all I call us tonight, Melanie, we'll get a copy of, uh, of Roxette's uh, hot album, uh, Look Sharp. And we've got more coming up from uh, Pear and Marie, live from Stockholm tonight in just a tick. Hold on tight, you know she's a little bit dangerous. Pete Roxette tonight bringing you Roxette live from Stockholm on uh, 008 033 300. And uh, John, listening to uh, Triple M in Brisbane, has dialed that number. John, go right ahead. Yeah, hi Roxette. Was it difficult hi. to break the international music market when you first started? Yes, it's always very difficult when you come, come from a very small market like we do. Sweden is a very small country. And uh, it's always tough to, to break into, you know, the, the American market or the, the British uh, market. But um, we were very lucky. It started for us in America and then it opened up everywhere. So, um, but it's always tough when, when you come from a small country. Uh, Maria, I have to ask you, does, does Sweden have a thriving music uh, scene or is it, is it fairly quiet? Oh, it's a lot of um, musicians and artists here. A very good music scene at the moment. And, um, but the, most of them sing in Swedish, so uh, it's not so many who try to, to get abroad because it's, yeah, it's, everybody sings in Swedish. So not so many people who understand Swedish. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Uh, John, thanks yeah. for your call. Yeah, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Amy now, listening to 2PK Parks. What's your question? Hi, what do you like, guys like to do in your spare time? Mm, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Play tennis. Um, most of the time uh, goes to, to, to write songs, write new songs and uh, work at work, uh, doing demos and everything, you know. But uh, it's a... Uh, and also, it's, it's a matter of... You always want to take care of your friends. We, we travel all the time, so the little time you have at home, you try to socialize a bit and be with your friends and your parents and, and relatives and everything. So it's... Right. Amy, thanks for your call. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Thank we're good. you. Thank you. Uh, Julie now listening to 4GR in Toowoomba. Julie, what would you like to ask? Um, I'd just like to ask Roxette. Uh, where does the name Roxette originally come from? Well, it's, it comes from a very, very old... Um, Dr. Feelgood song. Do you know the group Dr. Feelgood? No, I don't. It's a, it's a, no, it's an English group, and uh, the first single was called Rock Set, and we pick up the name because it's, it's a very nice, it's a girl's name, and it's easy to remember, and, uh, and we really like that, that group. They have done a lot of good, very good rock and roll. Thanks for your question, Julie. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank uh, you. While we're Bye. talking Bye. about uh, titles, so do you have a, a working title for the new album at the moment? 
Actually not. It's always the, the biggest problem is always to, to find a good idea for the sleeve and to find a good title. So, so uh, we, at the moment we don't. We, uh, Working we, very hard. It's on called a new <laughs> album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, uh, and will we notice like, uh, any uh, you know, discernible difference in the music uh, this time around to, to what we got on Look Sharp? Uh, I, I don't think so. May, maybe. We, I mean, we're, we're going to tour a lot for the new album and I, I think we, st we thought about that. We think about that all the time when we do the arrangements. So it's m basically a little bit more guitars than, than techno, you know, because it's easier to perform uh, with a lot of guitars and having all these sequences around. Right. Slightly, more, slightly more aggressive? A little bit, yes, I think so. Back to the roots a little bit. All right. Well, let's have a listen to a track from uh, the album that we do have at the moment. That, of course, is Look Sharp. This is uh, Roxette with Paint. Kevin Hillier, and this is Roxad live via satellite across Australia tonight uh, via the uh, the magic of the satellite links uh, all around the world. We're taking you to Stockholm, and uh, Pear and Marie from Roxad are in the studios there. Uh, Matthew's at home listening to 8HA, and has uh, got a question for you, Pear and Marie. Okay. Um, you took part in the Pretty Woman soundtrack. Do you have any amb ambitions to act yourselves? Well, <laughs> Marie, you always <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> well, I don't know really. I really love theatre and, and, and movies and uh, and uh, when I was a little bit younger I was um, in working in an amateur theatre but um, I don't think that you can you have to decide what you wanted to do I think now I right now we're working very hard with work set and I love to try to be a good singer as I can and uh, I think it's very difficult to do a lot of different things because in the end you, you everything splits up and uh, so about maybe in uh, 10 years maybe they want an old lady I can <laughs> I can take that part that kind of part uh, Marie, I have, don't you, know. have you had any offers since the success of the band sorry have you had any offers since the band's had the success that it's had um, oh well no 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 <laughs> uh, it's, um, maybe I don't know maybe I hope uh, when I get a little bit older and, and maybe in five, six years, maybe I, I want to try something. But, um, well, not now. We, we, we have to really to concentrate on rock set right now and do a good new album. All right. Matthew, thanks for your call. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And Andrew now is listening to Triple M in Sydney. Andrew? Hi. Um, do you have any regrets about anything you've done? Regrets? Uh, no, not, not so far. I mean... It's, uh, there's always so many decisions to, to be made, and, uh, uh, but so far, so good. It's, uh, it's always hard to, to, to know, to do the right thing. I mean, to, to know when to tour and to say no to a lot of offers and to do commercial stuff, and, you know, and, but it's so far, so good. So it's, uh, it's fine. Andrew, thanks for your call. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And Carol, listening to Triple M in Melbourne. Um, Pear, on the interview, one of the interviews you did in Australia, you mentioned that you wrote a song for Frida from ABBA. I was wondering what yeah. it's called and if you've written any other songs for other people. Uh, that particular song is called Threnody and it, it's, uh, it's a poem by Dorothy Parker, which I wrote the music to, and it's, it's uh, on Frida's first solo album, which was produced by Phil Collins. I think it was back in 82 or something like that. And uh, um, other artists, yeah, I've written to... Very a lot of people in Sweden. I think 30, 40 different artists. So uh, everyone, everyone who sings sings my songs here in Sweden. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that for many, many years. So it's okay. how about it's e nice. How about expanding that into uh, you know the rest of the world? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult. So if anyone but, listening, uh, anyone listening to the program now wants a song, you're, you're quite willing yeah. to uh, just you give know. me a call. <laughs> Yeah, double oh eight oh double three three hundred. Pear, just knock you one over <laughs> like that. Not a problem. And it'll probably sound as good as this one does.
Perrin Marie from Rock Center, our special guest tonight, live from Stockholm. And uh, I've got to ask you, you're enjoying unbelievable success at the moment, uh, right around the world. I mean, it's staggering the success you're having. Uh, what's the best part of it been? I mean, the bit you've enjoyed the most, Per? I think it's uh, to, to to know that people all over the world are enjoying our music. It's it's a uh, to to write music and to perform music that everyone loves is is a fantastic feeling. It's something you dream about when you when you start working and uh, it's just a sensational feeling sometimes it's it still feels like it's a little bit of science fiction that has happened to us i mean we, the look was number one in 21 countries all over the world and, and uh, like you said before we have, have had five big hits and the album is selling very well everywhere so it's it's really a dream come true for us uh, how about for you marie what's been the most outstanding thing for you well i i agree with everything paris saying and um i think when we heard that the look was number one in America, it was the first country for us that, where it happened, and uh, I, uh, I'm never going to forget that moment. It was a fantastic feeling. And uh, when we were traveling last year around the world, and when we came to Australia for the first time, it was a, it's a fantastic feeling as well. So it's so far away, and we really hope to come back to you soon. All right, we've got uh, more about that and uh, maybe the, uh, the promise of a tour from Roxette coming up soon. From Studio 33 of the Swedish National Radio in Stockholm, uh, Pierre and Marie from Roxette are our guests tonight. Uh, with, the, with the success that you've had all around the world, has there been any pressure for you guys to move out of, uh, out of Sweden and, and make your base, say, either in America or England or somewhere else? Mm. Yeah, everyone... When we started to work on the new album, everyone said, hey, you have to go to Los Angeles and work with American producers and American musicians. So, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to develop our own sound and work with, with our Swedish musicians and our Swedish producer. I think it's, uh, if, there's, if there's any secret for our success, it's probably because it's, it's very, for us, it's a very secure situation to work with, with the Swedish people and people that we know and an environment that we, that we, that we, we know. So... Uh, we, we want to stay here, work right. here. Right, and, and uh, live there as well? Yes, uh, I think it's very important to... When you travel so much as we do, and when you have some time off, and when you go back home, and uh, it's very important to meet your friends and your family. And uh, so I, and I really love Stockholm. It's a beautiful city, and um, so I, I want to stay here. And. Um, and uh, especially in the summertime here is very very nice and in sweden the whole country is this a very beautiful country so so it's nice to you feel safe here and that's nice all right well listen thank you very much for your time tonight on uh, rock sat well, it's a pleasure thank you and uh, congratulations on the success of the record uh, we hope there's uh, there's many more to come for rock set thank you thank you very very much thanks Ben. thanks marie thanks Set on rock set. Well, it's got that out of my system, thank goodness. Thanks to uh, Pear and Marie for their time tonight. Also, must thank the uh, the crew at Broadcasting House in uh, Stockholm for uh, all their help. Also to the Siebel Townhouse, to Arnsat for the satellite, and of course to the hard-working, diligent, and surprisingly sober team at MCM Networking. Next.